Hi, I'm Maureen Brown, your Master Talent hosting teacher. In part two of our video, The Host Tell All, Brian Corsetti, Jeannie Mai, and Lance Smith share more of their valuable hosting career advice with you, info on how they found work before they had representation, branding, and how they market themselves. This is part two of The Host Tell All. Yeah, I don't sit around and wait for my phone to ring. You know, I never have. A lot of people think that, you know, you, you work really hard until you get an agent and manager and you book a gig and then you just sit on the couch and they call you. And, you know, if you're really, uh, you know, if you've been working your career for a really long time and you're really famous, maybe that's what you do. But you still have to be proactive. You still have to uh, look for those gigs. And, and, and contact your agent, contact your manager, ask them questions, run things by them. It's a team effort. You're one part of a team. Uh, your manager is important, your agent's important, your publicist, you know, if you're fortunate enough to you know, have a career that needs a publicist, everybody's important, but it's a, it's a team effort, constantly, it always is, no matter how big you are. I do have a manager and an agent right now, but I don't recommend that every single person needs both a manager and an agent. Um, first of all, I wanna say that you have every ability to manage an agent yourself in the very beginnings, because I know funding is hard. So the role of a manager and an agent is really just to promote the hell out of you and pitch you to as many people as possible and to represent you. You can do that yourself. You can absolutely do that yourself in the beginning. In fact, to this day, even though I have both, I still do that myself um, um, with people so that they understand who I am. So I had an agent first, um, and an agent just pitched me, um, you know, brought me out to the right names. But the, a really amazing agent slash or manager can be both. And a really amazing agent or manager can understand just A, to pitch you, and B, to know your brand. So. Don't always feel like you have to get both. The only reason why I got both is because I've become so busy that it's now better as I'm conquering brands and also wanting to um, um, be a spokesperson for different brands. I, I want a team behind that end so my manager can focus on just managing my personal career and personal life while my, while my agent can look at the brands and the companies and the entrepreneurships that I can take care of. I often joke that I actually have one child, and that's my career. I spend 100% of my time on my career, and it's really hard being married, too, and, and also having a family and having a personal life. But the reason why um, it's easy for me to spend that much time on my career is because when you do what you love, you're not working a day in your life at all. I, I really love serving people. I love serving people through my show, How Do I Look? I love serving people um, when I attend a gala and, and speak on behalf of something important to me. I love when I'm on the red carpet and I get to represent the designers that I'm wearing. Um, those things aren't jobs to me. They're not something I just happen to be blessed to be paid for it. So I love what I do and that's also key when you figure out your own path is to make sure that you love what it is that you're doing so that you don't feel like you're working. You know what I did when things were slow with my career? I had full-on meltdowns. Look, I'm gonna tell you, they happen. If I was up here telling everybody that, oh, I just went on the internet and I started working, no, I had a full-on meltdown. Are you kidding me? That's the business. You melt down, but those things are healthy. It breaks you down. You think about what you really need to do to get over to the next level, and then you do it. It's laser light precision. You know, you don't concentrate on going out, having a beer here, doing this, painting the walls, moving in. Focus, focus on your hosting craft and do it. I was also in between shows, very slow. Um, so a way for me to not necessarily not do anything, um, I felt like I needed to focus in on something and do it to get me to the next level. For example, I got my real estate license. Okay, well, I'm in between shows. That's something that I can use as a host, as on-camera talent to say, hey, I've got this in my back pocket. So I got a real estate license, I focused in on it, and yeah, I got a show and I had to go back to it or whatever, but it's like, those are the things and the creative things that you really gotta think outside the box to keep yourself active, because when you're active, you, don't, you, don't, you go into that audition feeling 110% on your game. When, when you're not active and you get that audition, chances are you're gonna go in and you're gonna blow it, because you're not working the muscle. When things are slow with my career, I try to stay busy, and that may not always be, you know, your career. I think people make uh, a mistake by constantly career, 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 career. You know, 
be well-rounded. Uh, you know, get involved in, in some social leagues. You know, hang out with your friends. Do something on the side that is creative. It doesn't always have to be about career because you can get so bogged down by it. You, you get tunnel vision. I mean, and part of what makes you a great host is the fact that you're, you're so well-rounded. You know, you're so well-rounded and that you're involved in many different uh, aspects uh, of creativity. Um, you've got to stay well-rounded and you've got to live life. So if things are slow in your career, that's a good thing. Then, then take that time to, you know, go do something worthwhile. I always knew that you have to have a brand. You absolutely have to know your brand. Um, what I mean by that is whatever it is that's unique about your identity, you've got to rock that out. Whether, you know, see in this business, it might seem like sometimes that you've got to be, you've got to be attractive or you've got to um, um, speak a certain way or, or have a certain excitement and energy. I really don't believe that that's true. I really think that whatever it is that's unique about you is going to stand out and become your brand. So if you have um, a really funny lisp, maybe you talk a little different, and, and as long as it's audible, like you, we can understand it, that'll be your brand. If you dress a little crazy, if you come to an interview and you're wearing feathers, and you're just obsessed with fashion, and um, you happen to have a quirky wild side, that's gonna be your brand. Um, if you are that pretty girl, and you are, you do happen to seem like you're a little bit more lighty and airy and, and, and a little bit just kind of, just that, that girl who's maybe a little ditzy, that's your brand. But you just gotta make sure you're smart about knowing your brand and how you don't make it about yourself and just add that to the, the gist of whatever the show is you wanna take on. I absolutely believe that every host out there should follow their own gut instinct about who they are. Embrace what it is that's different about you. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be open to changing and tweaking things so that it becomes a lot more clear, refining your speech skills, um, maybe learning to project your voice or learning how to host different styles, but be who you are, be yourself. I was in a situation, I was in a situation where it was very clear that I was energetic, very opinionated, and this certain person thought that my brand, because I'm Asian and because I'm looked at as exotic and there weren't many Asian hosts at that time, that time I should play more of the sexy card. Be more sexy, reveal more skin, push up the boobs, and just um, be a little bit more of that, that, that um, a little bit more of that vixen. And that's not me. I'm much more of the friendly, like fun, fashionable um, expert. And so I had to actually pick and choose from that road, especially when it was like at a time where I didn't have many connections, I didn't have a lot of money to pick and choose who was going to represent me. Whether or not I'm gonna follow that or know my brand and stick to it. And that decision I made is completely who's, what sculpted me to be today, what I am known for, a friendly, fashionable host with an expertise in, in fashion and personality. And I'm glad I didn't play that sexy girl card because that's not really who I am. The brand thing is interesting. You know, some people have brands. You know, there are people that are experts in certain fields, and that's going to be their brand. You know, like NASCAR. You know, there are many hosts involved with things dealing, well, not just NASCAR, but racing. That's going to be the brand. For a long time, for me, you know, for almost 10 years, I was involved in country music. So one could say Lance Smith's brand was country music. That is a brand of mine. Um, but I find that if you, unless you are specifically focused in one area, and you consider yourself an expert, stay away from the branding. Strictly because you are the brand. You know, uh, you know, let's look at hosts that are out there now. You know, Tom Bergeron, for example, comes to mind. What is his brand? His brand is a fun, nice guy that does a great job. You know, Ryan Seacrest's brand, if we're going with big names here, is entertainment. I mean, he is entertainment, so that's his brand. But uh, early on, especially if you're just starting your career, and, and you, you, you don't have one specific thing that you're interested in, uh, then you don't have a brand. Your brand is you. Your brand is, is whatever it is you want to bring to each project, because you've got to stay open. I think at the beginning, when you're just starting out as a host, you don't need a brand. Just get out there and, and be the best you can be. Don't say you're, you're an expert at something when you're not. Don't lie. The branding thing is if, if let's say you're a doctor and you want to get into hosting or you did a couple of shows or whatever, somebody asked you to be a speaker on a, the Ellen DeGeneres show, then yes, brand yourself right off the bat. But a lot of people don't have that luxury of, you know, 
being a mechanic that was featured on a discovery show, you know, Monster Garage. You know, not a lot of people have that luxury. So um, for the people that don't and just want to get into hosting, I say experience all different kinds of brands until you really hone in on the one that you like. Because if you start out and you're saying, I'm going to be this brand and this is what I'm going to be, you get into it, you might not like it, and you really can't change it. You can change it, but it's a lot harder to change that brand because you're always going to be known as that person.